rectangles beneath a parabola. Let's see if we can try to figure out what's going on with this optimization problem here. It says a rectangle is constructed with its base on the x-axis and two of its vertices on the parabola y equals 48 minus x squared. What are the dimensions of the rectangle with the maximum area and what is the area? Okay, well what in the world is going on here? In this exercise and with so many other exercises, the important thing to do first is to draw a picture so we can better understand what's going on. Because really, with all these words, it's a little hard to picture what's happening here. So let's draw our parabola and then try to fit a rectangle beneath it and see if we can see what this problem is describing. Okay, so here's a downward facing parabola. Note that that's exactly what we have in this situation. We can think of this as a vertical flip down and then we move it 48 units up. So it's crossing at 48 up there. Not that that's important. Um, and what's happening here is we're fitting a rectangle under this thing. Now this rectangle could be very short and very wide, something like this, or it could be very narrow and tall, like this or something in between, right? We have all these different rectangles we can choose. The thing is, it's constrained on the top by this parabola here. Okay, so let's write our goal and then we'll write our constraint and then we'll check in with the official steps to make sure we're on track. One of the most important pieces of these optimization problems is to be able to clearly identify exactly what we're trying to do. So here it says, what are the dimensions of the rectangle with the maximum area? Okay, so we're trying to maximize area. So we need an equation for area, and that's what we call the objective function. Area equals what? Well, let's do it like this. I'm gonna label this distance here as x, and this distance over here is x, and then this height as y. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just label the entire base as x, but the thing is, as we work on this, we want x to be x that we know when we evaluate functions, and x is the distance off the x-axis, not the entire width of something. So I can easily get the entire width by just saying 2x, that's gonna give us our width, and that way I can use x as distance off the x-axis, and then plug in our f of x to get our y value. So here area is going to be base times height. Well, the base is then 2x, 2x times the height, which is y. The equation for the thing we're trying to optimize is called the objective function. Though not knowing that specific term will not affect your problem solving on these optimization problems in any way. Okay, next we need our constraint. That's something that's essentially going to limit the objective function, and it really pops out in this example. We have y equals 48 minus x squared, and these rectangles are forced to stay beneath that. So we'll just write in here y equals 48 minus x squared, and that it's constrained by this distance y can only be as high as the parabola itself. Okay, let's check in with the official guidelines for solving these to make sure that we're on track here. Okay, step one, read the problem carefully, draw a picture, identify the variables, we've done that. Identify the objective function, we've done that. Identify the constraint, we've done that. Step four, use the constraint to eliminate all but one independent variable of the objective function. Okay, let's solve it out from here. Okay, so we want our objective function in terms of only one variable, so I'm plugging in this y here. This gives us a equals 2x times 48 minus x squared. And now we have something we can take the derivative of and optimize to solve. Well, I don't want to use the product rule, so let's distribute that 2x. So we have area is, what, 96x minus 2x cubed. Now we can take the derivative to find our maximum. A prime is 96 minus 6x squared. But we want to set this equal to zero to find the maxes and the mins. Well, solving this thing then gives 96 divided by 6 is, it turns out, 16 equals x squared. And then we square root both sides and only take the positive value because we're looking for distance, which gives us x equals 4. Okay. Well, this is either going to give a max or a min, but how do I know which? Well, the minimums are going to be these extreme cases when x goes all the way across, for instance, and y has zero dimension to it, so a completely flat rectangle that way, 
and a completely flat rectangle being squished down vertically where x is zero. Neither of those cases are this, so this must be the maximum. I'll give a more mathematical reasoning in a minute. Let's answer the question. It says, what are the dimensions of the rectangle with maximum area? Well, we have four here, which means that this entire distance across is going to be eight because it's twice that amount. So the dimensions of the maximum rectangle that can be fit under this parabola are eight by what? Well, what is the height? So remember that x is 4, not 8. So plugging in 4, we have y equals 48 minus 16, which is 32. So then the dimensions are 8 by 32. Note that it also asks, what is the area? Well, the area is base times height, which is 8 times 32, which comes to 256. So notice I was able to arrive at that without doing a bunch of rigorous talk about the interval that x could possibly be and a bunch of rigorous justification on why it's a max and not a min. I just said, look, these are the mins and it's not that. So though the guidelines specifically say to find the interval of interest and all this and here over here we're checking endpoints and that kind of thing. It's not necessary on most problems. Every once in a while you run into something where you're like, wow, I really need to consider the endpoints. And I hope that those jump out when you see them. But certainly in this case where it's just one thing happening, um, we can tell that the endpoints are just zero area. So they're going to be the minimums and our maximum area is going to be the thing in the middle. Finally, you could always take the second derivative and note that that's going to be negative anytime x is positive. Since we're only dealing with positive x's, it's going to be concave down, which means any point of interest is going to be a maximum. That's the second derivative test.